um, the thing is like this. Ah, so actually, um, we were talking about how people think that knowing the origin of something is just knowing about it. And that is a very um, common mistake. Especially in Judaism. Actually, uh, Shol Magid once wrote an article for the for the Torah.com. Uh, that was the header. I don't actually, I didn't actually read it. But I assumed that he was going to say something about like this. Or at least that's the philosophy that's behind it. So whatever the application is, whatever it is. Thing but, collection of its parts. No, no, <laughs> no. So something like this. So, for example, we have a Yom Tov Shvius. Now, one of the like things that people that are slightly smart want to know is who, who and when made it into the uh, the holiday of the Torah, Matan Torah. Mama Lord, it says Mr. Des Mama Persan. Famously doesn't say it in the Bible for sure not. Or not clear where it does say. It doesn't say in the missionary either. It says in the Gemara. In some parts of it. And it doesn't seem to it also seems to be it seems to be like a big lacuna, like there's something very missing where where there's three three major uh them, three major holidays or Actually, three pilgr pilgrimages, right? That's what Shalash Shalom really are. Or three times. It's a good question. If you actually understand it that way, that actually changes things. Because uh, Regal, we, we, this is number one. When we say that there are three major holidays, that's not actually true. Or at least going back to what it says in Pasha's uh, in Shefa Shemois. It's not uh, what it says. It says there are three. Uh, regalim just means uh, steps or pa'amim. Uh, it basically literally means steps or, or something like that, or times, but it, it comes to mean time in that right. when it's abstracted. But it just means times of of going to the Besa Migdash, so of making a pilgrimage, or of seeing uh, seeing God, that's what it says. Uh, which means seeing God means whatever the already the Targum wasn't happy with it, and maybe even beforehand people were not happy, so they changed, might have changed the words even. But uh, because it says Yira, Yira, it's a whole, a whole machleik is what it actually say. But anyways, uh, you just have to change the nekudas for it to mean something else. Um, <laughs> but point is, uh, it's assumed to mean that the main point of there being three, uh, these three times is these are times which we are supposed to go to the uh, to the base of Migdash. Maybe to the Mishkan when there was a Mishkan and so on. And which really means that there's no, it's not a holiday. It's a, it's a trip. It's very different. Very different story. Yeah. Now some might it might also say, I'm just looking because I have it here. Um, basically, if you're not in in the in the Besamik you're not having it. That's what I mean to say. At least in the, uh, in the way it says in the in the first few times where it says about them. Um, which is which is sort of why I'm not even talking about what we do there, right? We make kabbanas, or do we uh, do things like that? Good question. And Shabbos, in Parshas Emma, and Shabbos, it says Shabbos il Hashem bechol meshvasechem, which seems to mean uh, it also says bechol meshvasechem by Shvuyas. Actually, not clear what it means because if you have to go somewhere, then how could it be bechol meshvas? So that might mean that the holiday does. Right, so then we, we have really two things, really two different things, which is one is the Ali and the Regal, and the second one is uh, the Isa Malacha, and the way it's said in the... It's called a Tzeres, right? Like a Tzeres was... A yeah, a Tzeres is not, it's not, it's not called a Tzeres in the Torah, right? It's only oh, called a Tzeres in Chazan. Uh, it's not called a Tzeres? No, that's another, another yeah, yeah, extremely yeah. weird thing. The extremely weird thing is that, <laughs> that's another very weird thing. Oh, really? is full of rules like this. There's a very one of the another riddle, but that's not no. Atzeres is it says in the Torah on Shmini Atzeres vei Mashvi. Uh, it says on two things on Shmini and on Shvi. Is in, uh, it says on Shmi on Shvi Shmini Atzeres in in Parshas uh, Emma vei Mashmini Atzeres Tielachem, which is the eighth day or the last second day of Sukkot. Uh, uh, probably means something like gathering or creating a, uh, a like what we call Atzeres basically. What Atzeres uh, Tfila? Same oh, okay. thing. Okay. <laughs> Koru is, is a language in Tanakh. It means uh, 
gathering. So like every day you don't have to come together in the in the Beit Hamikdash or wherever it is, and that and that day you do. Okay. They come and they have a big party or something like that. Is there a theme that if you don't know what the answer is about, you say it's about the Torah? Oh wait, wait. We do know what it's about. That's the problem. If we wouldn't know what it's about, about then, the Kurem, right? right. <laughs> or about that's whatever about about the uh, yeah the Kurem, which the which is a kind of the Kurem. Uh, so we do know what it's about, unlike we don't know. But I think that I'll, it might have to do with this. This is a this is an start. So wait, I'm I'm trying to get yeah just to describe this, this situation. Mm-hmm. The situation is basically that if you read the Torah and there's the, the all the holidays are given five times in the Torah, and uh, Shavuos is consistently uh, considered. Um, um, so number one, originally there's two things. This is how I would, how I at least see it as, at the moment. There's the thing of a Lila which which actually only happens in wherever you can go. You have to go see him, and seeing doesn't mean some spiritual thing. Or at least that at least uh, sits on the physical act of going to his temple. At least in the polytheistic world, that makes totally sense because seeing a god basically means seeing his icon or his statue. And of course, the Jewish god had a statue in there. An icon, don't tell anyone, it's called Krivim, and it's actually in Fersh Chazal, that in the time they would see it, they would show it to the people. And that is basically what Yerai Kozah Chacham means. Um, okay, of course, we get past that and uh, begin to the whole, uh, into the whole, uh, yeah, into the whole non body thing. And at least in some level, we get into this very early. I mean, the, there were no Jewish uh, icons. In, uh, in the second temple, really second temple, yeah, this is a whole discussion. But second temple, there was definitely no icon, and even there was no cleaver either. Probably for this reason, they pretend that it was lost and so on. But that's the, my conspiracy theory. <laughs> that people stop believing that it worked like this, yeah. so it didn't work. Anyways, the whole story with the angle that has to do with this, and I'm not getting into this this historical discussion. But I'm saying, anyway, that's what it means. Whatever it is, or whatever, even if you interpret it like Uncle says, something he right. takes it away, makes it makes it more abstract. It still means that you go there and you do something. Um, which means that if you can't go there, you just don't. A holiday in the, in the ancient world was always like this. It was down to a place as well as, well as to a time. And the entire ancient world, if you read the Greek holidays, if you read the Near East holidays, almost all of them, and it's not clear, actually. <laughs> it's not, I'm, I'm saying things. The God's holidays, what's called a God, holiday for the God, is always down to a place, a temple, as well as to a time. There might be holidays that are just for everyone in their house. Uh, Shabbos, obviously, is probably uh, for everyone you just rest the seventh day. Uh, there might be holidays that are uh, for everyone. And of course, you could also have a god in your house, which is another whole discussion. Where is the Yerak of the is another discussion. Doesn't mean you go to the Samikdash or could you have your own uh, Bumma, right? Could you do it on your own? So that's another discussion. But in any case, it seems to be bound to a place. And uh, holidays seem to be bound to a place. And actually, if you read if you read the uh, Eicha and and uh, and uh, and Yermia, the, the, when they're talking about the Harbin, they keep on complaining about the holidays stopping. Right. Shavas, right. Liban, and we always think, well, we're sad at Yom Tov. No, there is no Yom Tov, because no, Yom Tov needs, needs a place. Right. And if there's no place, then it just doesn't exist. Now there's when only... Does this come back, by Ezra? It's, what, the Ali the Regal, I guess? They start right. again, yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably. But they already, you know, since they were in exile once, they probably already abstracted everything, so it doesn't entirely come back in the same literal sense. Right. No, but but even in Ezra, the account of, of no, in Ezra, in, in Ezra, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Ezra, they do have, they do, do have very explicitly. If you read Sefer Ezra about the Chodesh Ashvi, they don't really have. Uh, I don't know, they have Pesach also actually in the Chemia, but they, they, uh, they, it, it is explicitly about coming to the Beis Hamikdash. And in Beis Hamikdash, it was there was a little regal going on all the time. We know mm-hmm. that it was a real institution. It was a real thing. It wasn't uh, some like mitzvah, another mitzvah. It was it was the main thing. Yeah. Nowadays, the only place that has a hal- the only holiday like that is like Bahima. Anyways, but it's not. No, it's not crazy. The logic of a holiday. This is why people think, oh, it's idolatry. Well, maybe I don't know. But uh, the logic of a holiday having us being in a specific place is actually the normal one. Right. Uh, it's the it's the it's very natural. Very uh, natural is a weird word, but it's psychologically natural, I guess. It's it's how people think of things. You need to get together. It's. Uh, and so on. Even even nowadays, it's bound to a place. So you say, so you have to go to shul. That's what I said. It sort of means you go down to the Torah and to the Torah and whatever. You go there and all night. And first, you do something with other people, which is basically the same idea, just now, in a smaller level. Anyway, so that's that's what the Shulah Shurgulim are, number one, are and originally in, in Pachas Vayim uh, Shvetim and Pachas Kisisa. Um, and it's sort of like you, you better see God at least three times a year. Like, 
you could get away with, with ignoring him uh, most of the year, but you have to show yourself three times. No, that's what it says. Right. I think that's that's how that's what the person means. It says, what does it mean? It says, you know, whatever. That's I think that's why Chazal, this is another whole thing, I think that's why Chazal understand all my admin to be my din. Because it really, like, you better check up with me once a year. That means basically I'm going to figure out what's going on. And at least that's one of the main things that the biblical God does. So it's obvious that they become Matzeres of Teres and all of that is very natural. It's not some something imposed. I think some people also said that theory about this, but I don't agree. I think that's very natural to think so you, of. Some of my friends would have the same theory where, no, now that we don't have a Besamekdash, it became a Yom Adin. So it's something more separated from that. That's what my friend Rabbi Holtzman once told me. About the Rosh Hashanah and so on, but I don't think that's true. I think that actually the idea of Abrupt Prakam Oil which is the four right. four holidays, the three holidays plus Rosh Hashanah, uh, which is just part of circus in some way, anyways, uh, is actually the natural. I mean, if someone tells you, if your boss tells you, uh, you know, you could, you're could, you going to live wherever you are, right? It's wherever you will live right. far away, but you better see me three times a year. You, you prepare for those three times. You make sure your things are in order. You know, sure. <laughs> it's, it's very natural to see it that way. I don't think it's uh, it needs to be seen as something different, but that's so. That's what yeah, holidays are originally. What what did I want to say? Ah, now now uh, now we can talk about two more things. We can talk about um, this is how I understand it. I'm just giving you a biblical story that I understand it, and we can talk about um, then we'll get to some more maybe more philosophical problems. We can talk about um. um uh, is another part of holiday, which is Issa Malacha. At least the Torah presents it as another thing always. Like there's there's a holiday, and holiday, like we say, for example, right, the big example, the big proof for this is Chal Shalmoyed. Right? We could have seven-day holiday, Chag Matzah, so you eat Matzah for seven day, basically, sort of, although the Halacha is not like this, so this is a problem, and also not, the uh, Pesach doesn't really say like this, but assuming that a holiday is coming, getting together, that's it, you're getting together and being happy, uh, then... You probably don't go for a day. That's boring. You go for a week. Uh, that's what I imagine. Okay. If you have to make a sukkah and you're slapping yourself, I don't know. It sounds. And the gedalach is not like that, but that's what I think. Um, and the, but the point, my point being that the the holiday, in the sense of the chagiga, the what we call chagiga, right, the happiness, the celebration, is a several day thing. But that is not the same as the ismailacha. So ismailacha, in the sense of don't work. Is really another thing, and like we see, it's only on the first day and then the seventh day. So those those would be a separate, like a separate din. Like sometimes Shabbos we don't work, but that's nothing to do. That's always that's in every wherever you live. So it's not really a holiday in that sense. And on Pesach you don't work one day, and on that day we. Is that also universalized for Shabbos? Is that it's just almost the same thing? Yeah, probably. And and so, at least in Shavuos and in, in Parshas Emor it says and obviously it doesn't mean that you should bring pashtas and so on because maybe it does. But I probably doesn't mean in Shavuos it says only by Shavuos. Interestingly, I think B'chalmet Shuzaychem says by Shabbos and by Shavuos in Parshas Emer. If I, I'm looking, I have it here. I don't see it saying anywhere else. Now that's an interesting fact, but it seems to mean probably doesn't mean the carbon Oimer. It might mean the carbon Oimer. Someone might tell you that it does, but it probably doesn't mean the Shtei Alechem, and which might you might claim does because Shtei Alechem is just the first. The Bechal Meshusechem. Okay. Because it just means you could claim that it does because it's just the first thing that grows. You make a carbon out of it or something and mm-hmm. wherever things grow, you can do it technically. <laughs> so maybe someone will claim. But probably the more traditional pshat is that it means the Isra Melech. Isra Melech. That's Bechal Meshusechem. So that's just a, way of a second thing. thing. Okay, so now, what is that? I don't know. I don't have a very good theory for what is that. I am assuming that it has to do with the. There's a lot. I don't know. I, mean, I would assume that it has to do with that Atzeres, but Atzeres only says the second day always. In other words, Atzeres says if you want to talk about the word Atzeres, which it's hard to know if this is the explicit, deliberate or not. All these different uh, words. Yeah. So Mikra Kodesh seems to mean an assembly also, a holy assembly. And that said, it means sort of the same thing. So I don't know what the difference might be. Might be there's a difference. And we can understand that on the day, like all religions at least have this. In the day where you're supposed to come to the temple, you don't work. You know, like something like that. Um, so that's the story with uh, the second story. Now the third story, 
Now, that is what basic, the ba what a holiday is. In other words, what you do in a holiday. Then you come to the temple, what do you do? You make a bonus, or more healthy do in a temple. There's nothing else really to do. You make a bonus. And which exact which bonus you look in Pasha Pinchas and give you exact list, which day, which one. And I don't know why, but there's at least that's, that makes sense. That's what you do. Uh, it doesn't say that you do anything else. Actually, in Sefer Dvarim, it adds something else. We'll get to. Um, so that is the second thing. Now, the third thing is when I would I would say call it when, but it's not it's not maybe not the precise way, but it's it's how I get to it. In other words, uh, when do we do that? Now, it seems to be important. Definitely, if you read Parshas Emmer, it seems to be very important that these holidays be in the correct time. In other words, do not call them. Call is literally what you do. You get together or you do it. Don't do it in the wrong day. Right? Now, what are the correct days? So, sort of, there's two ways of describing the correct days. And I think this is where things... Uh, for all... Uh, um, uh, for sure, there's only one. <laughs> and for uh, uh, there's no... For all of... For... for yeah, for, for Sukkot, there's two, for sure. So this is a good one of the is probably the more clearest example for there being two ways of describing it, famously. Um, I'm not sure that there's two ways of describing it for Pesach and Sukkot. In other words, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, I'm, I'm a chilek. Most people think there are two ways of describing both of them, all of them. And usually people say that there's two ways, which are the agricultural way and the, and the historical way. Well, that's that I'm connecting this to when it is, but it's really about. Because you see that these are. That's why I'm saying it this way. Usually people say if you any anyone that talks about this says that there's. They usually assume that the agricultural is the older one. So in other words, if you read Pashas, and then again in Sefer Shemais, and in Sefer Dvarim somewhat, you see uh, Pesach being in Chodesh Aviv, which is sort of spring, or really, actually, more to be more accurate, Chodesh Aviv is when the barley uh, starts getting ready in Israel. Um, that's what Aviv means. Aviv means literally uh, fresh barley or young barley. Um, that's the first the first crop to, to uh, what do you say? <laughs> To uh, come of age, to, yeah, to like to uh, get out of the ground, and then there is uh, it says that says and the and the and Shavuos is is when we start to cut the wheat the yeah wheat chitim. that's the beginning. So on Pesach we would start to cut the barley, and that's when we have carbon oymer that's connected to that, but so on, and then but that's what uviv means literally, or uviv is like when they start to get ready, and then the next day you could cut it or something like that. If you cut it, it's not really ready, so that's why it's caramel. But anyway, that's that's the levels of, of uh, this. The karaites actually literally uh, literally um, decide when Pesach is by checking barley fields. So uh, that's how I know that that's the pshat, because usually they know the pshat. Um, not always, but it's not a reliable indicator, but at least it's an indicator, that's what I mean. Um, and then, and Shavuos is cut, and then uh, Sukkot is described in those places as in other words, at the end of the year, when basically after everything is done, after all the harvest is done, that's basically what Asif means. People are somewhat confused about this, but it basically means, in, in general, agriculture, at least in the, the Middle East, the way it works is that all summer, every two weeks, basically something else gets ready, or yeah, depending on how many different things you have, but something something like that is what it actually looks like. If you go to like a kibbutz where they have all the things, you'll see, and. And then, you know, by the time by the time September rolls around, there's, there's, everything is done. Everything is put away. That's what Chodesh Asif is. In other words, that's the vacation time. That's really the vacation time because that's the best vacation that you ever have, right? Because everything is done and you don't really have to start working for another few weeks to start the next cycle when the rain starts and everything. So that's why it's the biggest, it's really the biggest Haldei Chag is, is Sukkot. Yeah, it's very elaborate and it's the longest. It's just it's all about that. So that's the first, the first, so it's people see it not only that's why I said I was exact. People see it say that it's the that it's the reason for the holiday also. In other words, you're just happy about the about the crops working and so on. I don't know that that's true because again, holiday literally means at least the golem literally means seeing the god. I say the god, but uh, and that's I mean I guess you could say you go to thank God for for giving you good and that's why again the Abba Prokem makes sense asking him that the next one should work out. Those are true, but you can't make it. Some you somehow you get like this impression that it's a secular thing. Okay, we're just happy for that stupid. Because you're literally going to the temple. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Um, but that's why I think that it's. Uh, that's why I would frame it as the when is the re correct time to have the holidays. In other words, what time? So the time is this one is at that stage in the yearly cycle. This one is at that stage, 
and this one is at that stage. Now, of course, then people you generally say that there's a second reason, or a second, really a second way of describing the times. This is very important for Shavuos, that's why I'm saying the uh, historical, right? So people generally say that Sefer Dvorim mostly gives us the historical, Esau Vayikra actually, uh, at least in, <laughs> in the end of Pasha's Emma, it gives us the historical reason for uh, And Sefer Dvorim. It's very explicit, which is, right, right. And in other words, right, although the Pesukas doesn't really make sense because it doesn't explain why it's then. I remember that there's something, oh, something very missing. It corresponds to something historical. No, it corresponds to something historical, but it doesn't correspond to something in the, it doesn't an, it, Right, it doesn't answer us why it's in the seventh month. Uh, uh, right, so there's something missing in this very neat story of two reasons. It doesn't actually right, work out, okay. as far as I can tell. Um, but, I mean, but it's understandable why Sukkot is celebrated in a way that's much more haphazard than for the case of it. Because the Sukkot is Shakti B'nai Yisrael is not something that necessarily commands a specific time, really. The event, I'm saying. Well, it isn't a specific time, right? It is. Mm. For, for, in I can understand why it's, it's a, you know, we're celebrating an event, not an attitude, right? Sukkot seems to be celebrating a certain attitude that God had towards the, the Jewish people. Okay, right? right. So this, it makes sense that you it's could not so say, by, 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 by it, it, it does have a time, position. right? But it, in other words, let's let's go back. So if you you could say something like this. In Pesach, it's, in Pesach it's explicit. In Pesach it's explicit. Right. So it's really only explicit in one holiday. This is why I don't right. buy this whole theory of there being two different reasons. But the only place where it's explicit that the reason for the time, not only the reason for the holiday, which we could disagree right. about, but the reason for the uh, for the time. In other words, you do Pesach, and that this is explicit in almost every time. I think every time, almost at least three out of five times, maybe more, where it says you will do Pesach in Chodesh of if ki Chodesh of Yitzos and Mitzrayim. So why is Pesach in this time? In other words, why do we eat matzah? Why do we, like it says in the of Pesach? Why? Because tonight, or whenever, this period, doesn't actually say tonight. Sometimes it says the night. Sometimes it says in this period. But that's another discussion. And this is when we... It says in the night, and it says in the period. What do you mean? In the period. Not in the spirit. In the, in the, in the, in the, in, sorry, in the season, really, right? In other words, uh, whatever. Because I, I don't know. Uh, that's another discussion. I don't know. Okay. I'm get to maybe. Um, uh, basically, the, we have... Uh, this is the time or the season because it really says Chodesh Ov. It doesn't say Kiba Yudalit Benison. It's a similar time. It does say that once, but it that usually yeah, doesn't say that. Right? Yeah, Chazem passes by. It says that, but I'm not sure. That, I don't. I don't really like the idea that it's everything has to be in a specific day. I think that that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. But um, and I also think that's not what it says. I think that we're imposing a lot of our ideas onto what it says. Okay. But uh, point is, it says clearly many times that Pesach is and when it is because that is when the Exodus happened. It does not say that for any other holiday ever. <laughs> but that's when it is because that. It says on Sukkot, Kime Sukkot, which is, nobody, know, nobody actually knows what it is because no, it doesn't, it's not an event and it also never, it doesn't even say that it, it never happened. I mean, it never happened in the, and that's the only time it says that it happened. What, nobody knows it. Like, this whole, yeah. Right. <laughs> it, like, we only find out about it. It's very weird. Right, right. Something, it's just, something is going on yeah. there. And, and that's why I don't not sure that it's really giving a distinct reason for Sukkot. I think it's really trying to just connect everything generally to Yitzhak. So that's my plan. But anyways, of course there were Sukkot, whatever. But that's not not important. And everyone asked, okay, right. maybe if it's an Anayi Kovid, we can understand. But Anayi Kovid, also they are mentioned, but not these. So it's very weird. Anyways, Anayi Kovid, not Sukkot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's Machlok. Okay, that's another problem. Anyways, point is, so the reason when it is gets these. You usually get this story about this being two reasons. Now, now, in other words, one of the agricultural reasons, secondly, the historical reason. Now, getting to our, our thing of, of Shavuos, there is definitely no historical reason given for Shavuos ever. And like I said, it's not really a question because there's no historical reason really given for Sukkot either. It's only Pesach that gets an historical reason. And even that you, is only in a very, very general way. Because I, it sort of says you do Pesach and Oviv because that's what went out of Mitzrayim. And I would, might think it's mean, I'm even thinking that it means that we start the cycle then because like it says, it might not even mean that, in other words, if, if Pesach would have happened a different time, I'm not sure, what, you know, there would be the same three holidays, we'll just count Sukkot first. You know, something like that. I'm not sure if it's even, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how much the causality works here. Um, but the point being that it's not, a question that there's no historical reason for Shavuos. We are very used to it. This is the interest. This is true. We, us, and I think this is this is a. I have a whole shtickle toy about this. I think that this is this is inheritance from Second Temple Judaism, where they very much like to do historical holidays because on this day. More so, so than the agricultural. 
more so than any other holidays that happened before. And I, oh, I had a whole shtick of Torah and that this has to do with the place, actually. Okay, I'm not getting into this. Point being, meaning to say that we, when we, we you ask someone what's the worst, so they t- you tell them, we seem to assume that it needs, it needs an historical reason. In other words, something must have happened on this day. And then we go looking, what is the thing? And then we say, it doesn't say anything, so we're just making stuff up. Okay. But the reality is that in the Tanakh, in the, yeah, mostly in Tanakh, we do not, we basically don't have any historical holidays. And again, we could talk about Pesach, it's the only one. But there's a lot of holidays. In other words, there's a lot of things that happen. Let's go, we could go backwards. A lot of things that happen. There's thousands of miracles and whatever occurrences. None of them get holidays. Literally none. Only Pesach. <laughs> the only one. Out of every, every and we, most of them don't even get dates. Like, we don't really care which date. Makes sense that Pesach is a holiday. Uh, yeah, of course it makes sense. But it, not, but that doesn't, in other words, it doesn't prove that every historical event gets a holiday, no, or no, no, vice versa, no, no. that holidays belong to historical events. Holidays are just things. They're important things for life. You need people. We, people need holidays. Yeah, God needs holidays. Yeah. We don't, but we don't find this, this whole idea of, of making holidays for historical events uh, is a very, is not found in, in Tanakh, as far as I can tell. The only time, there's one, Megillah Sesta, which is Your sort of post-biblical. <laughs> there's very, no, they're not. How, why do you, I mean, they, they seem to be useless, actually. They might be, the things, for, again, most, most important things in Tanakh, at least many of them don't even have dates. Some of the ones that do have dates, they might have a reason for having a date. I'm not saying the holidays, I'm thinking the, thinking the history, things that happened. Do you, do you know which day David Amelech won the... Yeah, no, but it's the other way around. No, but they don't. They don't get celebrations at all. Not no, sukkahs. So the Sancheriv coming to whatever. Sure, I don't know. Sure. Nobody I'm thought of. Yeah, whatever. Nobody. Right. It doesn't say. Shlishi, Yadda, right. It doesn't get a date, and it doesn't either get a remembrance in a date. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Actually, actually, things do get remembrances, but in place. That's an interesting, uh, interesting fact that in, uh, throughout the mm-hmm. ready in Tanakh, like even the Nachman Samalek that you're referring to, actually got a remembrance. It was a mezbech, though. Mezbech basically means a monument. Right. By the way, we right. think that mezbech means a, a place to sacrifice, which is also true, but it also means a monument. So you do a monument, but it's always done in monuments, yeah. right? Yeah, so okay. we still do monuments. I mean, right. nowadays people do monuments. Jews stop doing monuments at some right. point. But Goim do it, and it's right. a very, so, also a human thing. But we yeah. do not get, we do not get, the Lichus is basically a monument, but don't tell anyone. Right. Wait, we'll get to this, maybe, if you, if you want to. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, point being that we do not know. This is very related to what I'm saying now that I'm thinking of it. In any case, in the Bible, until Megillah Sesta, so from Pe- Purim, and this was a question that was asked by Chazal and Megillah Sesta, you have to realize. Megillah Sesta was seen as a very weird thing, that someone decided to make a holiday on the day which a miracle happened to them. It was a Yudal Dia, and the, the whole story about why it was that date, so they actually gave a whole backstory for the date. See, it's part of the story. It was important. And, and they decided, okay, every year on the 14th day of Adar, we'll do something. And the 15th day for some other people, whatever. There's a whole That's elaboration of it. Okay, we, I had a whole, I had a whole, I had a whole, I had a whole. That, this was my previous series of classes was about uh, Kedusha Sazmanim, where we tried to see if dates have, have reality to them. And this really Christ goes... It's not a phenomenological reality, right? It doesn't uh, it depends on... Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to say this class. I already said this class. It depends on how you think about time. Okay, okay. not for now. It depends how you think about time. But in the Bible, in the in most of it, from Pesach until Purim, at least, for all of that time bracket between Moshe and, and Mardukha, there was nobody making holidays for times. So that, why, why am I getting into this? That at least shows me that our expectation of making holidays for times is not uh, accurate for... Yeah. There, you would expect them to make a matzaiva. You would expect them to make something, some sort of remembrance for something important. We see Yeshua and then making a matzaiva for his nez and... And then in different people, we see people doing things like that. We, do, we would not expect them to make a holiday in a day. In te- second time of period, starting from the from Megillah Sesta, but throughout the entire second time period, we get Megillah Stanis. We get every right. second week another thing right, happened, right, right. And, and so on. And then someone said, and then until the Ragamdil comes and says, listen, we, we need some weekdays too, and this is, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> we'll skip it. Or maybe there's more context to that. But that's, um, so therefore, when you ask what happened on Shavuos, that's really... We go on on Yom Tov and say, which what happened on today? Well, I don't know. Who said not something happened? This is this is a holiday. It doesn't have to do with something happened. These are two different two different things. Uh, so that's one thing. I think that's an important an important concept. Um, 
So, but when is it? So, when is it? So, there's two. Now, Swiss is complicated. I want to close the door. Also famously in dispute between the not only the Karun but already before them the Tzedukim uh, supposedly disagreed with the date of Shavuos, and that is because yeah, but that's because of an inherent ambiguity with this, this date. It's not they didn't make up the problem. <laughs> the problem is there before them. It's just the Machlaik wants the correct response, um, and that is because again, so we have Shavuos two sort of dates and other words two. Reasons why it should be in this time. In other words, number one, like, so I'm, I keep on focusing on this is the date because I think it makes sense to have three holidays a year. Although it sort of doesn't make sense to have two of them so close together, they should be more evenly spaced out. But there's a reason for that because the winter. It's an agricultural reason. Yeah, sure. because the reason is because the winter doesn't have. Uh, you can't do winter holidays in in, uh, in ancient Israel. We actually do have winter holidays once you could. Once we have urban life, we do have winter holidays, which are Pesach, Hanukkah, and Purim. Those are the wind, those are to fill up those gaps, but uh, that only happens once there's more urban. And I have an ayah that Hanukkah and Purim are urban holidays because it's for fetish, because Hanukkah doesn't work in agricultural society, because where are you going to put your manure for the for the cows? I mean, it doesn't make sense. It literally assumes that you're living in a city. <laughs> and and Purim, which is slightly earlier, is actually transitioned because we have Kipunak Purim coming to the the first Mishnah Megillah is about right. the. About the country folk coming, coming to the, the city from it. So we see that really celebration is in the city. Right. But so we, we, that's like the sort of, I see that as the transitional uh, period. Of course, this is not a stark there. People continue to live in, <laughs> and but the point right. being right. still true. At least, with um, the at least sort of fix matches up to my theories of how it happens. So, anyways, that's why. But so it sort of makes sense that all holidays are sort of in the summer. That's what it says in the Torah. So that all holidays are in the summer because you can't really have uh, pilgrimages in the winter. All holidays and all wars, by the way, are in the summer. All holidays and all wars, you said? Yeah. All ancient wars happened in the summer. Like in the winter, people uh, went on break from the war, basically. And literally, it's also a fosik. Anyways, basically, in, the, in this, the, all, everything interesting happened in the summer. And that's why the Besmikdash, so if you ever wondered why the Besmikdash was destroyed twice in Av, it's because it makes, not, not just because of magic, because that was when the Romans did campaigns. Um, more or less, you know, whatever um, uh, yeah, it's, it's by the way, it's still true. Yeah, if you, they, that's why the Russians are stuck because they went in the wrong, in the wrong. They didn't the kind of pussik of Chedesh Aviv. You know, you can't go. Up. That's actually why the Jews went out of Egypt in the spring. You have to realize, although that doesn't really add up because Egypt has different seasons. So I don't know. How to, I don't know how to figure this one out. No, that's well, something that I just realized. Egypt? Yeah, Egypt. Egypt has. Yeah, it's hot and very hot in the summer. That's true, but Egypt has its whole. Egypt used to carry, okay, I don't know. They have a different system. They, they, ancient Egypt had a different season system. At least they thought of seasons a different way, which doesn't matter up in the four seasons that we have. Uh, okay. and the Bible doesn't actually have four seasons. It has six seasons, so not a problem. But the point is, <laughs> they didn't seem to divide it in the way the Israel, the Canaanites or whoever divided it. So I think that we're already, uh, we there's a confusion. Are we Canaanite schedule when we make these generalizations? Yeah, of course. I mean, Canaanite being, See, the when we say agriculture. Yeah, it was sort of six, but I'm not going into that. It says in the Pusik in Pasha Snow. Kor Bachoim Kaiz Vachorov uh Zerva Kutsi Korn Bachoim Kaiz Vachorov. Those are six. That's understood at least in the Chazal already to be six. I don't know if this is historically accurate, but the Chazal understand it to be six different distinct periods. Um it's yeah, but sort of add matches to the way we think. Uh, they just they just divide the summer into two and so on. I don't remember exactly. Uh, summer and, and winter are significantly longer than the spring and summer. Right, I don't say that they're equal. I, I don't remember. I don't remember right now. There's there's a machlok tanum about this that also matches to like different areas and when it's like this, like in the north, it's like that. It's, I don't remember, but the, it's you've been in Israel. I don't know. You know how seasons work there, so it's more or less. But that doesn't work the same in Egypt. At least not in ancient Egypt. In modern Egypt, it sort of does because they made a dam and that's one dam, and now they ruined everything. Anyways, um. Yeah, because the modern king, uh, whatever, decided that the Nile, which was working for 6,000 years or whatever, it wasn't working well enough for him. So he changed it. He needed to control nature. Yeah, very sad story. Anyway, maybe it's not sad. Maybe he's right. I don't know. Sounds sad to me. Anyway, um, and what am I saying? Kitzra Masa is, so that's the story. So now the story with Shuvia says that we have these reason that says, And then, the Bible seems to be confused about and it seems to not be happy with it. Because then you come to Pashas Emmer and then Pashas Rai, it gives you a whole way of figuring out when that is. 
when Shavuos is. That's we have this whole complicated thing called Tzfiras Oimer. And as far as I can tell, Chazal made Tzfiras Oimer into like a ritual. And I don't know, I, I think that's mostly because they sort of lost the basic meaning of it. Again, I don't like these kind of shatim, so we'll get to it. But that's the historical way of thinking. They seem to have lost the basic meaning, which is this is how you figure out when Yom Tov is, because they're already living in a, on a calendar, sort of. Although they don't literally have a calendar the way we do, uh, but they're closer to that. Um, yeah, the hill didn't actually exist, so that's another story. Well, not that the hill, not hill, not hill, not hill, the hill that was supposed to have made the calendar. Oh, nobody oh, ever know, okay. nobody knows who he was. I mean, we know we, I mean, this, that's a story. A random, random guy. No, it's just a story, and upside down, whatever. It's just a story that was invented much after it was supposed to be. Happened. Okay. I don't know if someone invented it. It's not a very clear situation. I'm just saying, but they did have something more of a calendar. So they're also very urban. Chazal are a very urban yeah, group of people. They're totally not agrarian. That's something that people don't notice enough. Whether they were agrarian Jews, then we just ignore them totally. They're not part of Judaism. Judaism is a very urban religion, and the Zionists to try to change it. Uh, whatever. They, they will have to go back very far to find a way to have Judaism that's not urban. Um, that's what it means, cosmopolitan, a lot of things. It's very, because very, uh, it comes with uh, uh, like a polit politics. Um, uh, you know, the Jews didn't stay in New York by mistake. That was tradition. Um, what did I say? No, it's not a shock that Lakewood became a metropolis. No, that's, uh, like, whatever. That's different. <laughs> it's not a metropolis. Not really, they would, they, they wish. Context, yeah. yeah. And that's, the, that's suburbia. That's another story. It's like, uh, um, it's, it's actually important, by the way, if you care about material history, it, it does, does shape how we think about things and how we live. But that's another discussion that I don't, uh, whatever. It's definitely true. Uh, anyways. Um, in some sense. Uh, point is like this. Point is that Sashvush has the time. And now, this is what I want to say. So with, what did I actually want to say? I don't remember. I want to get somewhere. Uh, but Kitsa, so this is the basic story. I'm just going to give an account of this basic facts as I understand them. So we have the time. And the time, there's really two things. So in other words, the way I would understand it, and you can disagree with me, is that there's a fuzzy time. In other words, there's a fuzzy time. At the first, when the first uh, bunches of wheat get ready, you go, go, go to the temple and do a sacrifice. That's basically what it says in Parshas Mishpat and Ankisis. Now, of course, nobody's happy with that because we sort of need to coordinate. Like, everyone wants to come at the same time and mm -hmm. your wheat is not the same time as my wheat and we're all in the field. That this says the Rishayim, this Pshat, we're all in the field and we're not really, uh, not even like talking to each other because it's really the busiest time of the year. The uh, seven week, these, these uh, ha uh, summers, first half of summer is the very, very busy time for these crops, which are the most important crops Backless. and since it's, it's so nobody really has time to even look at the watch and therefore we got to uh, coordinate at a time so we figured out a very simple device an extremely simple device and I think it's a really genius idea this fit assignment which has something like this okay you all know on Pesach what right you all there so just count seven weeks and come back after seven weeks you don't need to consult the moon don't decide I saw the moon then this night the other guy saw the moon the other night and Saudi Arabia the Ramadan is one day and Egypt is another day that's very confusing way to live just count seven weeks from a previous known date and agreed upon date, and you'll come back, and that's Shavuos. So that's what I, why it's, you get these two dates. But in other words, the way I understand it, the seven weeks is really just to uh, consolidate the... Cohesiveness. Uh, yeah, it's to make the... the the Kurek uh, to fix it a little more. Slightly fix it. It's not entirely fixed. It might totally not be entirely fixed. Maybe we might be able... To we start it whenever we want. That's where we get the Machsa Shabbos discussion. So Chazal took it a level further. This the Kuzri says that it might have been in the earlier times that it doesn't have to necessarily be from Pesach. It could just be that from whichever point we did the Oymer, which everyone knew when it was apparently, then we would uh, count seven days from that and it might be two weeks after Pesach. And then Chazal made it even more uniform and they said it's always going to be the after Pesach. That says in Kuzri and it's a reasonable theory according to me. Anyways, um, it's reasonable because it matches this intuition of things becoming more and more fixed, which is a right. certain historical intuition that might not be true. But that's, it sort of matches that. Uh, anyway, so that's what we have. So that's what we're left with. So Shavuos has these, these, that's basically that. It's basically the, like, and that's why it gets called later in the, in the Torah itself, Yema Bikur, Mechagah Shavuos is just the holiday after seven weeks. Doesn't mean anything. It's an empty word. <laughs> just talking about when it is. It might, it might not be totally empty. We could find more Pshatim for it, even in the Pshat, but it's not very important right now. Point is, that's, that's what it is. And it basically, it does not need any historical reason. If there's a historical reason, it's sort of, like we said, it starts from Pesach and continues that and so on, but it doesn't need much uh, 
uh, much more. What did I want to say? Tachlis. Oh, I really want to talk about something. Ah, uh, uh, okay. So, yeah. So now, for some reason, people, well, you could always give this Tarkal's thing, which, where we sort of stopped doing, having a Muslim Mikdash and stopped even understanding what this is about. So we need to first have some meaning. So some s- smart fellow, this is what people would say. This is a sm- some smart fellow went and read the Bible, and it says that Matan Torah wasn't the third month, and it's sort of one of says. And some, some even smarter fellow actually counted the days and figured out that it comes out exactly 50 days after Pesach. Either it doesn't, it actually doesn't come out, so then some figured out either they off his calculation, and then we're all confused since then. But anyways, that's how I uh, basically decided. Okay, so we'll make it about this. But now, so let's get talk about this. So now let's talk about this. Is the story that people say, and it's not. A, it's, again, it's a reasonable historical, it's a reasonable historical story of what might have happened. Now. There are two very important, more meta, more more philosophical level problem or questions which are really interesting, here, philosophical and theological. One is that it's not clear. In other words, we need to know what origins, what kind of value origins have, because it seems to many people and that's really like the Zionist impulse. They very much try to change voice, by the way. One of the things, the Zionists were very, very consistent with this. They really wanted to go back to the bias tradition and have a, you know, David Melech Judaism. And they were like, okay, Shavuot says, yeah, I'm so this is literally what we're going to do. We're going to make a parade with the tractors. You know, the kibbutz team, they, they had their own version of Shavuot. Yeah, and they were right. I mean, Rav Kook even told me, you're right, but like, why are you driving a tractor on Shavuot? Like, just do it a day after, like, because you're just being Machal Yamtiv. But it's weird, because that's the Yamtiv, they're right. Like, right. Of course, we have this idea of Chal but like that's why the religious Zionists have always these contradictions. But um, basically, they they try to go back. Of course, you can't do Bikurim because it's not temple, but whatever, we'll do some some celebration of the you know of right. the of the life you know. right. and shine. So that's that's uh, and that seems to me more now according to a certain way of thinking, which is sort of shared by many people. In other words, both the right side and the, and the left side seem to think middle, that. What? You think it's this, this reductive, this originistic account? That yeah, both the right and the left, think, right and the left, both the from people and the non from people seem to think that it's important what the, what the origin is. Right. And therefore, you would have the, these apicars and whatever, they're not apicars, but these Zionist, uh, re, uh, how do we call them, re- backward revolutionaries, whatever, right. going back, to, trying to reverse, to go back to that. And then if you're a religious Zionist, they say, yeah, we need to also make a business make and do that, of course, yeah. Okay. And, or we have uh, Haredi people saying, well, if anyone tells you that Shuas was not originally that, it's it was actually a whole politics two years ago or so, because some Jew named Rabbi Fagelson, you have to follow these Litvish politics. That's basically what one of the biggest things, a virus that he did was he said this, according to some stupid uh, David Cohen or whatever, said that, that, uh, Oh, he said that Shavuos was not originally his mama and her son. It's a chazal that made it like this, something like that. It's originally just, uh, and it's like, good morning. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. But David Cohen, they got him in trouble with everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's very <laughs> fundamentalist. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and he believes very much in this origins theory. If you yeah. read any of his stories, which are good, because he does goes back to the sources, but he's <laughs> very key things that sources are what decide everything. And this is actually going to be very important here. Um, so he would get very mad. He said this is apicarsis, because he's disagreeing with, like, the meaning of Shavuos, like basically. Right. Now they're both sharing the assumption. This is what we're going to say. They're both sharing the assumption that the original, in the historical sense, is the authentic, right? Is the more accurate, right. Right. and that is an unfounded assumption. Nobody knows who who said. Like maybe it's actually the opposite. Maybe the later reasons are better. Like right. Right. why right. does why is even why does uh, truth even exist in time? Like it doesn't even matter. Either you have a good chat, and like oh, so it goes. So then, of course, there's a lot of, it's not so simple. This, this assumption is, is based on a very old, I mean, it's going back to the Karoim that we're talking about, or the Tzedukim that have, keep on saying, well, the Bible is closer to us, so we're right. right. Which is, and then we go, and the, the way most people understand the answer of Torah Shabbat is, no, we have the actual earlier understanding. Because Moshe Rabbeinu actually understood things like us. And usually, both sides share the assumption that the, what's older is better. They just disagree what was actually older. You know, the story with the shoes and the Karoim, whatever. All these right, cute right, stories. Right, right. This Anyways, this, this has been the debate going on in. Right? So, so, so yeah, this is originalism. 
from the constitution. Same thing. Over there, it's even more stupid because <laughs> at least the Jews, at least the Karu and whatever, have the, have the excuse that we're supposed to believe that this was given, right, right. this was God's book given to Moshe and whatever. So, uh, uh, the, uh, but what George Washington cared is stupid. Right. Yeah, like who cares? So yeah, you, have yeah. to, you need sort of a reason why to even, assuming that it is the true pshat or the true pshat, we still need a reason for why it's... Uh, for why we should care about what George Washington, whoever said. Okay, well, that's maybe they have an answer to this. I'm sure they do, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. It's very nice, and we give him a lot of respect and kiss his grave, whatever. But like, why would we? Why would we listen to all his laws? I mean, but the real, more important question, which is, is really how truth works, or even how religious or legal truth works, not only metaphysical truth. Of course, everyone sort of, and I think that this is. This is a, I think that, I, again, someone was talking about this yesterday. I think that nobody, I don't know if there's really a theory like this. For legal, you could have a theory like this, but it would be based on some sort of positivism. But um, for um, Torah, some people seem to have the theory that truth is literally defined by what it says in the book. And if truth is literally defined by what it says in the book, then the originalists, or the pretenders to be originalists, would always be right. right. We just have to find out who's the correct originalist. Because, but if truth, and that this is a problem, I have to explain why it's even a bigger problem than you think. Because, okay, because it's easy to say that truth doesn't care about what the book says, but then why would we care what the book says? Right. So I want to say something, the, the, what I think what, Chacham, what Chazal really think, and what traditional people generally think, although they don't say it this way, is but that... The Rambam no, but the Rambam, the Rambam has a whole theory for this. Okay, the Rambam has a whole theory for this, so I don't know, it's complicated. Right. I'll tell you what I think. I don't know what the Rambam thinks. I will get, then we'll get back to the Matan Torah. I'll explain it in this way. But the, what I think is that uh, the truth of what the book says does not depend on what the book says. This is, a, this is going to be as bad, the, as, as, as paradoxical as it can be said. No, right? I, not I the truth of the fact yeah. of the matter doesn't care what the book says, because that's obviously true. But I think that the f- truth that the book is trying to get at doesn't care what the book says. In other words, the truth of the law. It doesn't, it doesn't even care. I would right, even yeah. go further. And we could say, we could say, well, this is simple. We could say even further, right? We could say even further that the truth of, of the, what did I want to say? The truth of the, what the author had in mind, if we talk about author's intent or something like that, is not beside what the book says. Sure. And why is like that? We mentioned about Hegel, right? Wait, so why is that? Hegel, right. Not anything, right, right, right. But why is that? But why is that? So like, so why, how do you explain that? I think that for God's book, it's actually easy to explain. Actually, very easy to explain. This is why the Rambam... Yeah, 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 very easy. You basically, for human authors, you sort of basically have to say that all human books are also inspired in some way, I right. think. Be- in other words, they care... I'll say it like this. For God's book, it's very easy because it's the opposite. Not... Think fuck it. According to the fundamentalists, if it's God's book, then we have to understand it in the way it was understood then because that was the closest to truth meaning. But it's just the opposite. Since God is the truth, or at least knows the truth, or whatever is the truth, however you want to say it. Should transcend that content, then, right? then not only transcend the contents. Then, what when you say it's God's book, what you mean to say is that it's the true book. Right. <laughs> Just another one. And God doesn't definitely doesn't care what some guy in the in the Bronze Age thought. Right. And even if he misinterpreted, then if you say that he misinterpreted, yeah, you could say that, or you could say he just didn't have the full understanding, or whatever it is. And since, and therefore, to look for the truth of the book is the same thing as to look at the truth of the world. Right. And there's not even two it's books. Like yeah, but the, this difference is I can't get into why Galileo already, already, no. already said it wrong. I no, forgot I, why. I, 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 I once had a theory. I once had a clarity for why it's right. Because he has two books, and there's no two books. Right, right. The Galileo agree, quote that is that I, there's I, two I, books, I, 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 and this is not a medieval position. The medievals never spoke about two books. Or mostly, I, I agree, mostly didn't speak about two books. Because there's no two books. There's only one book, and uh, I mean, the there's a lot of books in the sense of a lot of different sources of uh, insight and knowledge. But... Uh, they, there's only one truth, like like whatever guy right, said, right, right. Sure, and sure. therefore, uh, if the book is true, then it's sort of the opposite. Then it must care about the truth more than what it means, right. and therefore, what it means is the truth. And therefore, and I think this is the very weird thing for modern people have this weird assumption. For example, uh, for example, I, I think this is a very good example of this way of thinking uh, that uh, Lafsadikon, for example, in his book, and this was actually how people used to act, used to behave with books. Like in, in his introduction to his book, he has something like this. He says. I'm writing this book, and I'm very proud of it and everything. But if you find a mistake, just delete it and write the, write the truth. Right, right. 
And he says, why? Because I, he, and he says this language, he says, um, how do you translate chachamim? Wise people, uh, sages. Yeah, sages is a good, good translation. Sages love the truth more than they love themselves. That's the whole right. point of being a sage. And they love the truth more than what they say about the truth. Right. And the, otherwise they wouldn't be a, and he says, that's what it says. Right? My, is my, my sister. And therefore, I would be very sad if you would see a mistake in my book and leave it. Of course, make sure that's really a mistake. Don't make it worse. <laughs> this is why we actually stop doing this, because we realize that we're stupid and we well, usually make it worse. It's not this. It's not, it's not what? A good that? This, this idea of, of a book. I guess they took his book as something. I'm talking about his book. Let's talk about his it's book, the book that he wrote. He is a human being writing a book, right. and he thinks that it would be totally legitimate. He not only legitimate, he, legitimate he would tell you, thank you. I underlined it here, and I don't find it. But he would tell you, thank you, if you take his book, and you see a mistake, and you just delete it. Right. Or you add something, to, add something to make it clearer or better, and so on. And in modern times, people, firstly, understand that that would be wrong to do to old books, because we don't really care about the truth. We care about what it says because we're historians and not truth seekers. Right. Hey, so it's a more pluralistic understanding of truth than... than okay, uh, it could be. That, that, that's, a, that's a good, but that's only because that's the truth. Well, you right. see? I mean, so yeah, you should I, take this I, piece I, and delete it because it's not I, correct. Because I, I, I really want to know what mistake you made because that would be more helpful to me than right, fixing right, it. Right, okay, right. So okay, here, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Answer, that's right? fine. But right. the, it still creates a very... It's true that the reason why we changed our mind stop doing this is because we realize that we're not so sure of things as they thought. But, right. but that should only lead us to more truth, not to less truth. Right, sure. and, and, and it really means that nowadays we're all obsessed with, with citations and with who wrote things, right. who wrote the Bible, and if someone edited it, that means, no, if someone edited it, then he was trying to make the Word of God, uh, represent the Word of God better. So what's the problem? That sounds good. Uh, sounds like it's something we should have done. Like, uh, you shouldn't be mad at him for editing it or whatever he did. Uh, and so on. So, and that's actually an old ancient... Mm. Like I'm not talking about this. Oh, the Rishonim were very everything. confused about this. I'm not getting... Right. Of course they were. No, for basic reasons. No, not I'm not getting... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Not sure, I'm not sure. At least for, at least the, the Chazal, the first Seifrim, they did the Kunis Seifrim. They, they still sure. edited the Torah. Ezra, I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is. I don't know the answer of who it is. Ezra was late. I mean, Ezra is a thousand years after the Torah was supposed right. to have been It's not... Yeah, he actually changed the even changed the, the font. Right, right. Um, but the uh, point being, but we changed our this. There's a whole list. Okay, this is the whole thing. The point the Adkan, Therefore, if she was now, now, but now the really interesting. Therefore, the interesting question to me is not who was the first one to decide that Shavuos was not entire and so on. The interesting question has to be, uh, what does it mean for Shavuos to be the day of Matan Torah, and what's the point of that? What does Matan Torah, what would Matan Torah mean? And what would it mean for it to have been in a certain day? And what would it mean to celebrate that day? Right. And maybe, and really what I want to get to, um, and what I think, and this is where I connect all of these ideas together, is where I, I would say that the reason why it doesn't say in the Torah, is because this is based on the wrong way of thinking about Torah. Wrong. Okay. Yeah. So the earlier way of thinking actually had something correct where they didn't say that this is the day of Matan Torah because they didn't have a Matan Torah in the way that later people had. And if you have that well, Matan Torah, that it's makes it's sense. This decisive moment where, where okay, okay, so now this, this needs to be, yeah, this needs to be very much uh, taken apart. And I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a basic theory. I have a lot of, lot of uh, like, pointers to different, uh, different worlds. But I do think, yeah, I do think that that's a, the fact that I don't care about the, what's being the first. I, I, I do think, what, what it's saying, I think it's, it's not correct when I say it like this. I'm back to being a historicist. What I really am saying is that the, when Chazal celebrates Shavuos as Matan Torah, they're not celebrating it in the sense that we say. So I was very mad that Chabad or other people, they like every year to write, this is 3,021 right. years after. And that's stupid. It's not 3,021 years after Matan Torah. If, if it were celebrated, then it's something that happened now or last week. I don't know. Besides for that number just being based on a whole bunch of speculation which they seem to me think is like an article of faith to believe in. But even without that, right, I'm not talking about the number of Masabrej, it's, it's like it's all speculation. Nobody knows how many, how many years Cheskia Melech was king for, you know, so. But anyways, um, uh, point being that that seems to be a very vague thing that when people are saying, the Chazal said, the Mama understand, that's what they meant. And I think they didn't mean that. Because that's very much historicizing it. And then, 
either you're a fundamentalist or you're a kaifer. But if you're interested about the wisdom of, of Torah as of what does it really mean, then of course it makes sense to celebrate it, and that's what it means. But they don't, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, write it into the Bible. We don't need it to make it into history. We don't need to actually find which day in the year it happened. Uh, and so on, it's not really important. And therefore, I think that, for example, the question that the Chaynim have, oh, he says, but it turns out, according to the Cheshben, it wasn't. So, okay. <laughs> that's a very stupid question. Because Mamat, it doesn't even mean that, I don't think it was ever meant to literally mean that. I don't even know that we actually left Egypt on the 14th day of, of uh, Nisan, even though it literally says, okay, it probably was some, I'm not saying that didn't happen. But I'm just saying that it's, that's well, not the point. It should also change this meaning. Also, when it, of course it changes because right, you right. could you could literally make this and other. Uh, uh, you, we actually we actually it's totally average. Of course, it doesn't correspond to anything because it's all human. All humans deciding what the date it is. Of course, <laughs> so this, that doesn't even make sense, right? So in other words, you could really say it like this. And this is some alambish way to answer it. I once so I, I once thought of this answer, and then people told me that it's what he says in some book. But I, now I'm realizing that you could take it even a step further because sometimes I said, okay, so the kasha that the magen Avram had and others is that. Uh, the, the two chashbonis don't add up, right? It's not the, if, if, I don't remember what the problem is. The point is what, that man Torah was not on the 50th day of, of, of Svira Sohemer, according to, was not 50 days after Pesach, it was uh, 51 days, basically, according to how he, how he understands the chashbon and Sechta Shabbos over there, I think. Now, th- by the way, this question wasn't asked by anyone before him. It's very interesting because the Shoinim already, the Rivash, others asked the question that we're asking, which is, why doesn't they have a title and what's going on with this? But they didn't really care about the precise date. Um, so one answer that people say is, and I thought is that, yeah, like how do you even count the dates? So was Matan Torah on, on a Monday or, okay, was on a Shabbos according to, so every Shabbos is Matan Torah. So why, like who decided that the day of the month is the real, we are like so right. bored into this and by the day of the month is, I mean, it has got some reality because it follows the moon. Okay, but therefore what? Right. And even it doesn't actually follow the moon, by the way. We're, we're even losing the moon, by the way, because of our Milad Vainani. But anyways, <laughs> point being, uh, you know that like in a thousand years, uh, or in, actually now in like 30,000 years, we're going to be totally like the Muslims because our Cheshman is not actually accurate enough. But okay, that's another Pesach problem. What sense? Pesach is going to be in the summer. Because it's actually moving like by a few minutes every year because of uh, our, our Milad being off. Actually, you notice that the Milad is... Okay, anyways, point being... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if we'll be, if, whatever, that's another problem. Maybe we should, no, we just don't need to give, we just need to do another other one more time. Okay, anyway. Uh, point is, uh, uh, what, my, what is my point? I'm just think, throwing things around. My point is, yeah, but my point is, oh, my point is, so I would say, so I could say like this. So I used to say, like, like okay, who told you that this man man is above seven? That's the wrong way of thinking. Man man is the same commission as Fira Saimer. Now the fact that that year it didn't happen, who cares? But that's that's the that's the time when it's said. Just like we can make it vavnis, and we can make it fifty days later, which is when we make shvurs. Right. So it just goes with that calendar. Why do you think that the other calendar is primary? Maybe this calendar is primary. But really, once you think about it like this, you could actually go directly and could say we're just making it now. Today is you don't even have to. Have the whole fifty days are a waste of time. Sure. They're just that just because because no. calendars are you, like what does it even mean for it to be the same day? It just means that we recognize this day as. We we we, we assign it this significance. That's all it means. I'm not saying it's a, no. I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying is that the how does it become like this whole concept of something being like it's my birthday, right? So if it's my birthday, is it really my birthday? No, I have the English well, according English. to the English. So what, when was I really born, right? Yeah, that, really born. Exactly, you were not really born. Really, you were really born. The, the only real way to answer this question is to do like the computers do, like uh, uh, how many seconds since a certain time, right? right. The Unix epoch, you know, the Unix. That's how computers figure out, figure out to coordinate time, because otherwise they'll be all messed up with time zones and stuff. But otherwise, we could, you could just make, you could literally say now it's four o'clock p.m. and it'll be four o'clock, right? right? right. We just by fiat do that. It's an arbitrary designation. Right. And right, and just therefore, just like we can do it for the week, we could, you know, let's say we get all get together and make the week, we add a leap week, whatever, and all Sunday will be a different day. And and we could all get together and just directly say that this is my man Tarasani. It makes just as much sense. Right, right. <laughs> no, it's sort of I'm not sure actually. Usually we want to be to exist in a certain system, so that's why the fifty days makes helps us. Because you want some sort of coherence. Like I could say, right. so why can't I say today's my birthday? I mean, actually today was my birthday, but let's say I say. No, no, no. We'll meet, we'll meet. Let's say I just come and. But the most important thing about your birthday is that it's once a year. 
which day of the year is not so important. And if you say Kaddish, something like if so, people are like really like this, people are really hung up about the correct one. I think this is another case of originalism being stupid and actually really stupid because here everyone understands that it's arbitrary, right? Are you going to say Kaddish if, you know, like, you know, I'll give you another, okay, this is really going to become halachic, but, you know, um, no, that's not, not a correct example. It's sort of correct, but not good enough. Uh, let's say someone, uh, right, the, the people that died in the Holocaust, nobody knows which day, so the Rabbanut, some people decide, okay, we'll just take a Asir Batev, everyone's here, it's finished. What's the big, real difference? You light a candle, like, it doesn't make any real difference. But, and then people, oh, Baruch Hashem, we found out that it was really on the Yudzayin Tevis. And point being, that now you're going to, like, what, what difference does it exactly make? Right. It was also on a Tuesday. It was also right, so we, we might as well say, this is the day that this happened. And exactly, Shine. so we could do that for Zman Matar too. I'm just said, this is the Yom Shnitten Batayin. Was it that day? What a minute. Yeah, it was on Shavuos. <laughs> That's how we know. How do you know? Because it was on Shavuos. <laughs> how do you know the Shavuos was? We decided that it was on Shavuos. Like, who makes Shavuos? We make Shavuos. So it was on Shavuos. I'm finished. Like, and, you know, someone, you could celebrate your birthday on Shavuos. Like, we have, yeah. So for some reason, we are very, I, I don't know who told us that the real date is what it says in the calendar. Yud Zayin Cheshvan. That's the real, I don't know who told us. I have no idea who told us. Okay, we're going to stop with this. But, but anyways. I guess. I think yeah, it's, like, please, it's I good. Know. But then we can move on, and, and really, that's what we really have to think about, what the Torah means. And then, since we don't have to uh, care about what someone thought it means, we could say that it means whatever we want, right. and that be, and not, not what we want. So we could say the true meaning, right. and then that's what everyone really meant, because they're clearly about the truth. I'm really interested in, like, okay. there, there are some people that, that maybe who could even go a step further, and they say, look, obviously, historicism is not a super, it's right it doesn't correspond if you're in Central, it's whatever. It doesn't, it's not telling you what the, 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 what the thing is or even on what day. There's no such thing as on what day. It happened before, right? right? Whatever day it is, is the day now. Whatever. Hopefully there's such a thing as before that we have to get right, to. Right, right. <laughs> okay, but that's the Bergsonian already. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I haven't been like Bergson. You ever, ever no, this? but I told you I was working on times and this has to do with this question. Okay. The book, the Bergson book? No, oh, okay, well. I'm not going to read it now. I haven't enjoyed it. Um, uh, maybe the, one the, time. Right. No, there has to be. One okay. time. I'll, Originalism I'll... is one of the hardest things to, to discuss people out of. Yeah, because it seems it seems to work. I think because it's connected with a lot of different like metaphysical well, assumptions it, that we have. Sure, and a lot of that I think I think I think. And you need to sort science, of break all of them. Industrialism and, and, and science. Is like it both, could be because we're in time. We have right? a lot of a lot of mechanical time and. A lot of mechanical time. And, right. That's like that. That's the heavy Bergson. Right. Yeah, no, but I, it could be. Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe. What I'm saying is, so Bergson, right? Bergson was a great man and had a clock, right? I know, I'm, not, I'm right. very mad at clocks, too. I think they're right. very bad things. So Bergson, he says, look, the, 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 the one day I, that, I think that that's why. What is this? I think that that's why. The train schedule. Yeah, I think that that's why. That's why. Uh, he says that's what they should have stopped. Of course, clocks are capitalist conspiracy. That's why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why the first act that Moshe Rabbeinu did was make his own calendar. Okay, this is a, that was my shot. To, to go out of Egypt. He said, the first thing, we need to have our own time because we don't care what time the Egyptians say it is. Right. That's what, like, real Tanuim, they don't follow the Zionist uh, daylight savings time or whatever. They have their own, you know, right. they have their own clock. <laughs> there's, yeah, yeah, a, there's, yeah. like, there's like a real original Kanoi yeah, yeah. clock. <laughs> like, and yeah, nobody, you, you, you have to, like, that translate. That. <laughs> it's a six o'clock. It's not really six o'clock. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, like... Or, like, okay, thank you.